So this is all about the number one fail part on a Yamaha or a Superjet uh, PWC. We've had a ton of problems with these. I can't even. Didn't and work. I'll tell you what, that has hit us like a plague. Like, surely as the sun will rise, you better thumbs up this video, and I don't want to see one thumbs down. <laughs> well, that wouldn't start and wouldn't run because wouldn't you know it, the good old fashioned Yamaha start stop switch. It's pretty crazy how many we've had to deal with. Just about every single one of these Yamahas here, we've had to fix the switch on multiple times. I haven't had to do it that many times in the past three years on my stuff, but then it's just slammed us in like the past two weeks. Yeah, no, it's like, if you have a Yamaha of a certain age, those start stop switches are just, they're just dead. This is your standard Yamaha start stop. We call them a start stop switch, you know, and what really goes wrong is the lanyard section. And take these apart it's two screws here and here they come apart so when you open a one of these start stop switches this is what you're gonna find more more than likely these little boots and this is on the lanyard area they open up and then water gets down in them which causes the switch to stop working so and I don't know why you can't just buy this little boot by itself because that's all you really need to fix this you can uh, just clean up the internals on that switch and it'll work again but if you don't have this repaired or replaced then you are just going to have water get back in there and have the same problem happen again once you guys get these screws out of these switches you're gonna want to carefully I'm doing this with a camera in one hand but you want to make sure to open it like this with this end you want the opening because the those little parts in there will fall out if you don't have this I don't know why I can't explain this right now but you want you don't want this you know upside down because those will fall right out and they're so small you'll super lose them but the, this is what you'll see inside you know these are a little bit corroded but let me show you the other part you can see right on there it's got a ton of corrosion all over it and it's actually jumping those two terminals together when it's not supposed to and it's just really simple to clean unless you know if this is if your switch has been sitting like this for years it's not going to be easy to clean but since this one it just happened it's so simple just wipe it off and then you know you could spray with some electrical parts cleaner or whatever but really just me doing that rag to that that's all it needs to work but yeah also it's a good idea to get in just try to see if you can wipe up some of that junk but you got to be really careful because these it's two little like fork things and two little tiny springs so you really got to be careful not to lose those something you guys might find handy though is if you're stuck out on the water and we've used this trick many times you can go down into your ski and it is this, and you can unplug this one right here. Okay. Um, now the thing about it is, once you unplug this, you'll probably be able to get yourself started up if this is, you know, if this is really what your problem is, the, the, the contacts being corroded. You should be able to get yourself fired up, but it will not turn off with a stop button or the lanyard coming off. So we will we will lower the uh, idle speed way down so that you have to keep it going with the throttle so anyways it's the black and white one if you're like stranded in a pinch you can unplug this and you can get started but you cannot turn it off by normal means so take that into consideration i mean if you wanted to you could plan to just go over to the dock you know switch your fuel off and circle around until you ran out of gas that's another way you could shut down if you have unplugged this, just to get yourself back to the dock. One thing that is really annoying about these start-stop switch problems is it is the lanyard part that fails, the little lanyard rubber boot, which is a lot smaller than the actual starter or the stop switch rubber boot. So you can't just grab a spare off like, you know, an old junk switch that has, you know, the regular start to stop switch bigger rubber boot because you get two of them with each switch when you only get one of that small one on each 
So, and that small one's the one that always goes bad. I've never seen the bigger ones go bad. So how we do this, we'll open them up, we'll clean them up. If we need to, we'll put a wire brush them a little bit. We'll take the little forks out, the little springs out, clean all those up. You gotta be careful, those are really small parts. There's also the spring which moves that switch. And sometimes that spring is not strong enough to, um, uh, to push the switch all the way. So sometimes we have to stretch that little spring out a little bit. I was talking about stretching out the little spring that moves this up and down. And how that affects everything is this is spring loaded and it pushes down on that. Okay. And then when you stick your key on there, it pulls up. And then this little spring inside can push out. So you, you don't ever want to have your spring in this so strong that it can overpower this spring. Because then when you pull your lanyard, it wouldn't stop. But we have like a full parts bag for Yamaha start stops. We've got lots of extra parts for them. And the things we go through the fastest are the little rubber booties that go over the lanyard section. And we have tons of the start, or this is a start button, stop buttons here. They have the exact same booty on them, but it's, they're different than this one. Um, let me see if I can show you. Here is, oh yeah, funny thing was, all of our spare parts, all of these, the lanyard switch booties were junk anyways, so. So uh, you did hear me talk a little bit about stretching out a little spring. And that little spring goes right in here, okay? It's the biggest spring inside your uh, lanyard uh, switch. Uh, there's also a tiny spring in that slot and a tiny spring in that slot right under the little fork things. And if, <laughs> if those fall out, you know, you're in big trouble. Meaning, I don't think that you'd be finding them anytime soon. But anyways, here's one of those springs that goes right in there. Anyways, I'm not going to actually stick this one in there because it's kind of a pain. But, you know, if, if the spring's not strong enough to push this up when there's no resistance on it then your switch isn't going to connect right and every once in a while we've had that problem and we just just take the little spring and stretch it out a little bit and then put it back in so that's not a huge deal we like to put them together with a little bit of dielectric grease in there just to if some water does get in there keep it from getting all corroded and if you guys know where to get those little tiny boots definitely let me know because i'd like to get some uh, as far as I know, the only way to get that is to buy the entire switch, which costs, I believe it's like a couple hundred bucks or 150 bucks or something. So it's really just an annoying price you got to pay for just a tiny little problem. You can also convert these to like a, a, a different type of start stop switch, like a Kawasaki or something like that. You know, you're going to have to be kind of smartly with wiring, but you, it can be done. When we replace these with like a, a Kawasaki switch, what we'll do is get the pins out. This is the Kawasaki uh, pin connector. But we'll take the Yamaha actual this thing, the little plastic, and then we'll stick the Kawasaki pins in there in the correct correlating spots. I don't know right offhand which colors go to which on the little plugs. So if you want to know, we could probably do a video on that for you or if you're smart enough, you can just look these things up on the internet and figure it out for yourself. Man, dealing with all these start stops, just, oh my gosh. Definitely makes you a bit annoyed. And I could see how people be turned off from Yamaha if they've ever had to deal with this. The start stop switch plug is not just limited to Yamaha. I've been fiddling around with this thing forever and not even thinking it could possibly be the start stop switch. And. Well, I mean, there you go. And I think that's like a tiger shark one or something weird like that. But we've actually had the problems on the Kawasaki ones too, so. Well, we've had the most problem with the Yamahas, but we have the most Yamahas, so. I don't even know what to think about it anymore. It's just a good, high quality switch, you know? There's just nothing, nothing bad about them. It just has the start-stop switch from hell on it.